A Labradoodle named Stanley is specially trained to help a young woman with her physical and psychological challenges. He really turned her life around. He's a miracle. Fine. Canines train their noses for an important job. A yellow lab named Leo helps his blind handler find a new path forward. I can do anything with him as long as he's by my side. This is Stanley, a two-year-old standard poodle lab mix who's pushing the boundaries of what service dogs can do. Oh, say hi. Good boy. His handler, Julia, suffers from multiple psychological and physical challenges. And amazingly, Stanley's been trained to help her overcome every single one of them. I feel that Stanley is the peanut butter to my jelly. I think he's awesome. He's goofy. He's fun. You can go into a room and know that no one's looking at you. They're all like eyes on Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Eyes on Stanley! When this playful dog has his service vest on, he's all business. And that's because there's a lot that's required of him. Go through. Stanley is a multi-purpose service dog, so he's cross-trained in a couple different areas. So he does psychiatric service dog tasks, he does medical alerts. One of the main medical alerts that Stanley performs is for a rare heart condition that Julia struggles with. I was diagnosed with neurocardiogenic syncope, which just means that the nerve that's in control of keeping your heart pace, mine kind of glitches, which then in turn makes me faint. Amazingly, Stanley is able to use his sense of smell to detect Julia's heart rate and knows just what to do if he senses a rise in her blood pressure. For my neurocardiogenic syncope, Stanley will alert me by pawing my leg, and if I'm sitting, he'll paw and climb onto me and push down, not letting me get up because if I was to get up, I would faint and fall over and hurt myself. When Julia's heart condition is causing mobility issues, Stanley is trained to help her remove items of clothing and fetch objects for her. But this is just the beginning when it comes to what Stanley can do. I suffer from chronic migraines as well. Majority of the time I go blind and I end up not being able to move. It's very scary. Stanley can smell if Julia has high serotonin, a sign of an oncoming migraine, and is trained to warn her if one is imminent. Before I have a migraine, Stanley will sniff and start licking the inside of my ear very intensely. That lets me know something's going to happen. I need to take my medication to alleviate a migraine from happening. Stanley might be the only trained service dog in Julia's household, but he's certainly not the only animal. Currently in my house, we have five animals. Tristan the Jack Russell, Stanley, Cindy Lou, my cat. Alex, my husband, has Dita. She's a German short hair pointer. And we now have a little puppy girl called Annie. And then Julia also has had a lifelong equine buddy named Leo. Leo is my horse. He's my American paint horse. I've had him for 13 years. He's important to me because we've been through a lot of crazy adventures. I wouldn't even be here without him. Each and every one of these animals has supported Julia emotionally over the years. On top of her many physical illnesses, Julia also deals with depression, anxiety, and schizotypal personality disorder, a mild form of schizophrenia. Fortunately, Stanley has the training to help in these areas as well. If I'm having an anxiety attack, Stanley will come across and lie down on me, and he helps do tactile stimulation. So for me, licking really helps, so he'll vigorously lick my hands or my arm to help calm everything down. Julia didn't always suffer with psychological illnesses and led a very normal childhood. Julia always has been fun-loving, positive, and always has been an animal person. When I was younger, a lot of my psychological disabilities that are happening now weren't active back then. It happened when I was 18. When Julia left home for college, her many disorders began to develop. It was her boyfriend, Benjamin, who was the first to notice something was wrong. Julia was going through a really depressed moment in her life. Her overall attitude of positivity turned into one of negativity. She wasn't as open to compassionate intimacy, like a, a really close hug. That's really when I started to notice a huge change in her. At that time, 
When I was 18, I did the worst thing you could do, isolate yourself and not talk and just kind of push it down and push it down and push it down. While she was at college, Julia tried to hide her disorders, but it only made her situation worse. Clearly, when she came home from college, there was a, a big, big change in her. She would spend a lot of time in her room. So she was kind of a, a recluse in a lot of ways. She wasn't highly social. She wasn't her bright, chipper, perky, happy self that she once was. There could have been times when she was contemplating taking her own life. There definitely was times when she was contemplating hurting herself. Julia began chronic skin picking, a form of self-harm that helped her drown out the psychological pain she was in. Desperate for relief, she even began mixing medications. I would often mix medications to help quiet everything down in my mind. Everything was really loud and busy. And seeing that change is what scared me and which was the breaking point to which encouraged me to go see someone and figure out what was happening, why this was happening. I went to my family doctor and just spilled the beans. And he helped push me to get help from a crisis worker. And he is the one who suggested looking into service dogs. Julia was intrigued by the idea of getting a service dog, but she wasn't sure she would be eligible. I, I, I'm not a war vet. I'm not a child who has autism. I'm not just this one thing. So I lost a lot of courage and a lot of, a lot of gumption from that until I learned that in Ontario, you're allowed to owner train and work with a, a puppy of your choice. To begin owner training, Julia would have to start with a pup. She searched several litters before discovering Stanley. He had the perfect temperament for her needs and she was ready to get started, but not without a little help. One of my friends, Ronnie, she had him from eight weeks to 10 months. She herself is a service dog handler. Julia's needs were very complex <laughs> with training Stanley. She had multiple different disabilities that had to be looked at with training Stanley. Most of what I did with Stanley was the basics with obedience. Most of what was done task-wise has been her training. Because Julia owner trained Stanley, she was able to customize his training specifically to her needs. The process was so successful that now Stanley is completely in tune with Julia and is always monitoring her right down to her heartbeat. The fact that he can pick up on different personality changes is amazing. He does cardiac alerts. There's a lot of different things that he does that I didn't realize that a dog could do. Once Julia brought Stanley home to live with us, her whole life was different. She was more outgoing, she was laughing and giggling the way that she used to when she was growing up. He really turned her life around. I would never have thought we would get there because of Stanley and we did. The change I've seen in Julia has been so profound. She's happy again. She smiles, she laughs. Thanks to Stanley, Julia is far from the recluse she once was, but his training is not done yet. Julia's family loves going on canoe trips, and if Julia wants to join them, then Stanley is going to have to get used to being in a canoe. Stanley and Julia in the canoe? Mm, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> Stanley and I are about to go canoeing for the first time. I'm feeling a little bit nervous, to be honest. It's an important step for Julia because it's one of the pieces of her new life, her new journey. It, it's, it's difficult for a dog to be in a canoe. The first few times that they're in there, it, it's scary for them. It's rocking and they, you, know, you hear the water running against the canoe. It, it can be a scary environment for them. Stanley the service dog is about to go in a canoe for the first time. His trainer and handler, Julia, wants to join her family on canoe trips. And since she needs Stanley by her side at all times, this is something he'll need to learn to do. If it wasn't for Stanley, on this kind of glum, gloomy, rainy day, I would not be out and about. I wouldn't be riding this river with the canoe that I've always wanted to do for years. I, I wouldn't have taken this step to be adventurous. So having Stanley kind of pushes me to go and challenge and do those things that I wouldn't normally have done. It was just really amazing to watch and just amazing to see them out in the canoe. It's the first step of many to the next point in life, which is up and up and up and better and better. You have to thank Stanley. Four legs and a tail, baby. Yeah, that big poofy <laughs> white poodle. <laughs> Who knew? My quality of life with Stanley is just skyrocketed through the roof. I can go out with friends and have fun independently and not worry, oh, am I gonna faint? Or, 
oh, am I going to have a migraine? I can worry about if my hair looks good or if what I'm wearing is complimentary. If there's effort with people relating to animals, there is a freedom that just is. I don't think I can explain it. I can feel it. And uh, it would be nice if people could give that gift to each other as easily and as freely as animals do. Stanley is, he's a miracle. Because I think we were going to lose her. I think we were going to lose Julia. He gave her back to us. And that's, at the end of the day, what I'll always thank him for. Near Niagara Falls, dogs like Hunter and Jay are hard at work utilizing their noses so they can one day become professional detection dogs. I'm Sid Murray. I've been training dogs for more than 25 years. I specialize in detection dogs. Detection dogs can be drug dogs, bomb dogs, accelerant dogs. What I'm going to demonstrate is a bug dog. His name is Hunter, a chocolate lab. Today, Hunter is learning to detect bed bugs. He's in the first stage of training, which utilizes a Kong with a scent in it. This particular Kong has bed bug odor in it, and that's what the dog is really going to find. I'm going to throw it out of sight, heel, walk away, bring the dog back, sit, fine. When I demonstrate the dog going into the grass, he can't see his Kong. All he can do is use his nose. Even in the tall grass, Hunter is able to find the Kong quickly, showing that he used his nose to find the bed bug scent. Jay is already onto stage two and no longer requires the Kong. She knows just what she's looking for, illegal narcotics. Sid uses a synthetic imitation to help train Jay on the scent. We're working with Jay. He's a drug detection dog. She's a Belgian Malinois. She's two years old. I put it in here, hide it down inside, and the dog goes in there and sits, and then I give him his reward for finding it. Find, find. Now I'll ask her to re-indicate it, find, and she's gonna put her nose out again. Once she finds the odor, I take the Kong and place it on the source of the odor that she indicated on. Receiving the toy lets Jay know she's done a good job, and it's onto the lockers, which are used to simulate school or workplace situations. Good girl, oh my God, you're wonderful. Jay found every odor that she was required to find and hit on it, so she did really well. Thanks to Sid's extensive training, these dogs will be certified detection dogs in no time at all. A yellow lab guide dog leads a blind man out of the depths of depression. And he's Danielle's eyes, and that dog does the job. Meet Leo, a nine-year-old lab whose work as a guide dog has changed the life of handler Daniel, a busy man who is also blind. The best way I can describe Leo is I compare him to Scooby-Doo. He's a bit of a goofball, a bit of a scaredy cat, but just a very mellow, relaxed dog and just likes to have fun and always cheers me up. A wonderful dog to have. I love him dearly. The only thing I could say about Leo is that he's... Amazing. He's amazing, amazing and he's Danielle's eyes. Without Leo, I'd be scared to see Dan going to work every day. Hey, Leo. Ready to roll? Leo's got a big job to do in guiding Daniel. His commute to work as an accessibility officer is extensive. In order to get to work from my home, it takes me about an hour and a half to two hours in the morning of commute. Leo makes sure that I get to the office safe and sound without killing myself. <laughs> it's a long, arduous journey, but Leo's got the training to make sure Daniel stays safe along the way. Guide dogs are usually trained to guide a blind person to where they need to go. So while they're working, uh, walking on the sidewalk, if there's an obstacle in the way, they're trained to avoid the obstacle. If the person needs to find certain targets, like a door or stairs, with a certain command, the dog is trained to bring that person to that target. He helps me to cross the streets. Uh, he helps me to get on and off buses. He basically makes sure that I get to where I need to go safe and sound. Daniel wasn't always blind. It was a hereditary disease that slowly took his eyesight from an early age. The disease is called Wagner disease. It's a premature deterioration of the retina. So the retina just falls apart. When I was very young, I lost my left eye. My right eye started losing in high school. Then about six years ago, I lost the remainder of my eyesight and been living completely blind ever since. 
He was a normal yeah, kid. Yeah, he, he, he used normal. to make friends easy. His dream was to be a vet because he loves animals. He always has, but unfortunately because of his, his condition, he can't anymore. When I was low vision and had tunnel vision, I did pretty much anything. Did my groceries on my own. I got to work back and forth. I did a lot of stuff on my own. So when I lost my eyesight, I had to relearn everything. When Daniel lost his eyesight completely, it was an incredibly difficult time for him. He was secluded, uh, angry. Depressed. 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 He, he couldn't accept it. I wasn't a pretty picture. It was a very difficult time in my life. My world had been turned upside down. When it came to the point where I wanted to commit suicide. Uh, that was my lowest point. Daniel didn't suffer alone. His niece, jean Viev also inherited the disease, and the two lost their vision simultaneously. It's when I first started losing my eyesight and was left with tunnel vision. She was going through losing her eyesight. So I was there to kind of help her through it. I became blind before my Uncle Dan. I was 14. And two years later, that's when he lost the rest of his sight. I was just there for him, and I was able to listen to him and understand what he was feeling because I experienced it myself. So I wouldn't wish it on anybody. I just realized if I give up so easily, what kind of example am I giving Genevieve? So I pick myself up, dust myself off, and I just um, decide not to give up. Thankfully, my family was there to help me through it. Because of them and because of my niece and because of my friends, I was able to pull through and get out of that dark place. And over time, that's also one of the reasons why I decided to get a guide dog. And Leo came into my life at the right time and he helped me through a dark place. Just having a dog in my life, it just to me gives me meaning and gives me a reason to get up in the morning. And just having that animal depending on me and looking up at me, it gives me hope and gives me confidence that, you know what, I can do anything as long as I have my guide dog with me. And I'm very grateful that he's in my life because he helped me through. He was in a dark place for a couple of years. And after he got Leo, he kind of slowly learned the world around him again. And he learned to laugh at things. He learned to make jokes. Leo was able to pull Daniel out of his depression and help him to accept his vision loss. However, it took some time for Daniel to trust Leo to be his guide. I was still rather new to the world of being completely blind. So walking with a dog and hoping that he guides me where I need to go, it was still something that took us a while. But, you know, it's over the years, as we, the more we've worked together, the more that he's proven to me that, you know what, he can do the job and he can guide me where I need to go safe and sound. And uh, so, yeah, I completely trust him now. It takes a lot of guts and a lot of trust in a four-legged animal. And that dog does the job. Daniel's trust in Leo helped him get back to work and allowed him to start living his life again. With Leo by his side, he's able to make the long commute and arrives at the job he loves. Uh, I work for the Canadian Food Inspection Agency as an accessibility officer. I'm very thankful to have a job where I can get up in the morning and go to work and contribute in my own way to make blind people's lives better. At the office, the benefits of Leo's presence are felt by everyone who works there. When we arrive in the office, he usually his harness is removed and he's just a regular dog. Lays down in his bed, he wants to sometimes play. If anybody themselves are having a bad day, they might just walk up to my office and just say hi to Leo and he'll cheer them up. Oh, Leo is such a great dog. He's always joyful. He's always the good energy in the office. Never in a bad mood, of course. Leo's a super, super sweet dog. Uh, very gentle, well-trained. Uh, you can tell that he, he really does love Dan and... He does his job very, very well. Leo has helped Daniel to lead a happy and fulfilled life. When jean Viev saw the dramatic change, she had to get a guide dog of her own. After seeing me having Leo, she decided that, you know what, I want that confidence. I want that ability to just walk around my community or my environment without any worry. So she got herself a black Labranese named Java. My guide dog, Java, is my life. <laughs> He's going to be three soon, and I've had him for over a year now. Having him in my life improved my life drastically. I have more social events, and I go to college now, and I don't think I could do it without him. Thanks to Leo and Java, Daniel and jean Viev can venture out into the world. Today, they've booked a cooking lesson, a skill that can be challenging with vision loss. We are actually at the home of Maria, who will show us how to cook tacos. Different neighborhood I've never been to before, but uh, thankfully, with Leo's help, we've managed to make our way here safe and sound. Hi, Maria. Sometimes it can be stressful to go somewhere new, but the dogs make a difference. 
doing this and stepping out of my comfort zone is uh, both scary and exciting. Feeling a little bit nervous, but uh, no, I'm looking forward to it and I'm, uh, I'm excited. Daniel and Jean Viev, who are both blind, have stepped out of their comfort zone with their guide dogs, Leo and Java, to lead them to a new neighborhood for a cooking lesson. Daniel, who only a few years ago reached a very low point in his life, is now opening up his world thanks to his service dog, Leo. Without him, I'd be lost. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be the same person I am today. So tonight, we're going to make a chicken tinga. Daniel, you have a big bowl in front of you. Okay. That's where you're going to shred the chicken. Sorry, Leo. You ain't getting any chicken, but... I prefer to keep Leo out of the kitchen, uh, being that he's a Labrador and Labradors love to eat. He's doing pretty good. He's pretty quiet, relaxed. The smell is like, this amazing, delicious, and I'm, I'm starving right now. And then we're going to add the salsa. Okay. Even in a kitchen full of delicious aromas, guide dogs Leo and Java keep their composure, a testament to their incredible training. Okay, guys, dig in. Our cooking class was awesome. Maria's a wonderful chef, and uh, the food was delicious. Leo came into my life and helped me get back to work. He helped me to get uh, out of my shell and come here and learn to cook some delicious Mexican tacos. Good food, good company, and uh... really good dogs. <laughs> the boys have been so good that I made some special treats for them. Oh, I love Leo. He's an amazing dog. I can't imagine life without Leo. Having Leo there, having a friend with me everywhere I go, has has made my life better. No, Leo is family. So is Java. Yeah. To us, they're family. But Leo is our reassurance that yeah. Dan is safe. We have a peace of mind, Dan. basically. Leo has given me the gift of hope, a gift of friendship, of the confidence to go out in the world. So knowing that I can go anywhere with Leo tells me that I can do anything with him as long as he's by my side.